in this chapter we will see how to use the opt-in package for training any kind of neural network. We will start by mentioning the non-convexity optimization problem that neural networks training are affected by. Then we will see what are the advanced optimizers that the opt-in package offers us in order to be able to train complex network. We will see then how to reformulate the training of a network as an objective function optimization problem. We will see also some basic optimization equations. And at the end, we will see what is the optim training workflow. And we will write a script which is going to be retraining a network on a CPU and a GPU using any kind of optim advanced optimizer. The objective function used to train neural networks is highly non convex. This means that finding the global minimum is not a trivial task. As we can see from this animation by Alec Redford, we can see how different optimizers manage to escape a saddle point. Training this network is not trivial because the loss function is populated by local minima and also there is who claims that the major obstacle for the training are instead saddle points. You can find more details in the description below. The opt-in package from Torch provides a series of different optimizers. For example, we can see stochastic gradient descent, average stochastic gradient descent, LBFGS, conjugate gradient, ADA delta, ADA grad, ADAM, ADA max, FISTA, Nestor accelerated gradient method, LMS prop, R prop, and C mice. A description of these algorithms is provided below. Or also, it can be reached from the command line. So far, we have seen that the set theta is the collection of all the parameters at different layers, like layer 1, layer 2, and so on, until the last layer, L. In the case of fully connected layers, or classical neural network, we have seen that these elements here are matrices. Instead, for a convolutional layer, we have that this element over here, it's a 4D kernel. So at the end, capital theta will be a collection of very diverse objects. In order to apply more powerful optimization techniques, we had to convert this collection of uh, different sized objects into a one-dimensional vector that we are going to call theta, lowercase, which is a point in a RD dimensional space, where D is the number of trainable parameters. So RD is also referred as parameter space. Therefore, now when we compute back propagation, we aim to compute the gradient of our loss function, function of the parameter theta, with respect to its parameter theta. Some of the most common optimization techniques are the following. We will start with revising gradient descent. In this case, we are going to have that our new theta is going to be our previous theta, to which we subtract the gradient with respect to the parameters of our loss function, computed on the whole dataset. 
So I can also write this one as theta minus eta gradient with respect to the parameters of cos function of theta given the whole input x, design matrix x, and the label capital Y. Then we can see the stochastic gradient descent. In this case, we can write that theta takes theta minus eta gradient with respect to the parameters of our cost function, function of parameters, computed only for the example i with the label y. Mini batch gradient descent instead can be written this way. We have theta takes theta minus eta gradient with respect to the parameters of the cost function. And here we are going to have a submatrix xi and yi. So if we think about x or y being the design matrix with m examples and n features, we may think that xi is a, a subset of this data set. For example, this could be of height batch, batch size, and and still here we have the n features. One more interesting uh, method, uh, that which I think it's uh, pretty easy and I'd like to mention here, is the momentum, which update is as follow. We have that velocity, we have gamma, previous velocity, plus eta, gradient with respect to the parameters of j. Here I don't specify if it's a mini batch, if it's stochastic, if it's complete uh, classic batch gradient descent. I just put a generic j of theta. And then we have that theta becomes theta minus the velocity. A link to a very nice blog post by Sebastian Ruder is included in the description below. I highly recommend to go over it to have an overview of several optimization techniques that are used currently in deep learning. So how are we going to train with Optim? First thing, we are going to build our data set. We are going to have our data contained into the design matrix X. And then here we are going to have for example, our labels y. So this is my training dataset. Then I'm going to build my network, layer after layer. Which is fed with our examples. At the end here, I have to define my loss function to which I feed my output of the network. And of course, I will be feeding also my labels. Finally, from the gradient, I'm going to compute all the derivative of the loss function with respect to each and every parameter in the network. As final step, I will get finally from every layer, I'm going to get the parameters, which is my uh, set of queer objects. And from this one, actually, I'm going to make my parameter vector theta. And moreover, I also get these guys here. And I'm going to have my gradient with respect to the parameter theta 
of my cost function. So both those two elements here are going to be a monodimensional vector, which I will feed to my optimizer. Together with the evaluation of my cost function, so that the optimizer can find the best solution to minimize my loss function given the parameters and the derivatives of the loss function with respect to the parameters themselves. So, we are going to write now our training script, which is going to be a generic training script and it can be used for training any kind of network. In this case, I will just simply train a classical neural network. So, let's open our editor and we start with require nn. Then I can actually set manual seed to 1234 so that we have consistent results uh, across multiple runs. Then I can define my model, model equal nn dot sequential. I will also define the number of input features, and in this case, I'm gonna plan to have a XOR uh, kind of problem. So I'm gonna have just two input features, and therefore, for the output, I'm gonna just uh, have one output, a scalar output. Therefore, my uh, size of the network is going to be n. Let's put 10 neurons in the hidden layers and then our k. So it's a three layer uh, neural network. Let's add, therefore, uh, our first linear going from the first dimensionality to the second dimensionality. Then we are going to have model uh, add nonlinear function. For example, in this case, I'd like to use a tan h nonlinearity. Um, then let's add another linear function, another linear uh, projection, and that's it for, for my network. We can decide to visualize this network by typing print model. We can do torch, train, and there we go, our neural network. So let's keep going and let's define the loss function. We are going to define now our loss function. So we are going to have local loss equal nn.msc criterion. And now we can build our dataset. So let's say that our dataset has uh, 128 instances. Uh, therefore, I can build my design matrix X equal torch dot double double tensor of M rows and N columns. I would have written uh, CUDA tensor if I would have liked uh, to run this on a GPU instead, then I can build my labels. So it's going to be uh, torch dot double tensor of just m elements. And again here, I would have written CUDA tensor if I would have liked to create a, a dataset that stays in uh, the device memory. And so let's fill uh, let's fill up this. Uh, data set with some values. Uh, so we can run uh, for i index i that goes from 1 to the uh, number of elements of examples. Uh, let's create our local um, x, which is lowercase x, means the singular example is going to be torch dot round n of 2. This is this is a normal distribution, uh, two elements of our normal distribution. Uh, then have, let's have our y, which is going to be an XOR uh, output. So let's say if x1 times x2 
it's uh, greater than zero so it means or both are positive or both are negative uh, then y it's equal minus one because it's xor otherwise if it's lower than zero means they have opposite signs we are gonna have a plus one now we can copy these uh, single samples into our main design matrix so I'm gonna have my I throw uh, copy over the example I and this works perfectly uh, fine also for CUDA and the same we are gonna have uh, Y of I example it's going to be equal in this case uh, Y which is a scalar so I don't use the copy and, and that's it and here we have built our data set now before starting the, the training I'd like actually to uh, extract all the uh, capital theta relative to each layer in which in this case they are matrices but uh, it doesn't matter they are just objects with different sizes I just like now to have a one-dimensional tensor which contains all the parameters of my network so let's have actually a global variable net which is going to be equal our local model so that I can access uh, outside the script so let's call torch interactive train so if I print net okay we're gonna have our model if I do net uh, let's put going full screen if I do net parameters then this one returns me theta and the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to each and every of these objects with the Hessian notation let's see also the dimensionality we said that the first dimension we were going from two elements to ten elements so here we see that the uh, first matrix theta 1 it's 10 by 2 of course should be 10 by 3 but we have here as well our um, 10 elements bias which actually uh, in our notation it's in front of the other part and the second layer we're gonna have uh, 1 times 10 plus 1 so actually it's gonna be 1 times 11 in our notation in the part below we can see that the gradient uh, of the loss function with respect to the, the, these objects have the same dimensionality because again the Hessian notation has been used. We would like now to have instead just two vectors, uh, the parameters vector and the grad parameters vector or theta and grad theta. We can do this by typing net get parameters. So if we have get parameters instead, we can see now that it has output uh, two vectors. Uh, the first one is one dimensional vector of 41 elements, which is our uh, current weights that are randomly initialized. And then we have the grad parameters that are initially all zero because we haven't run uh, we haven't run the uh, back propagation already okay so we can go back to our script so we can have therefore local lowercase theta and grad theta this should be lowercase but uh, doesn't really work in the coding so uh, I will write model um, get parameters and this gives me the one dimensional theta and the gradient with the of the loss function with respect to the uh, theta then we are also defining a optim state which is going to be uh, all the parameters that we are gonna send to our optimizer in this example I will use the uh, stochastic gradient descent so we can check what are the options available by typing uh, require optim then we can do question mark optim dot sgt 
we press enter and we can see here what we can uh, specify for example rate, learning rate learning rate decay weight decay weight decays momentum dampening nester of so we can uh, specify multiple uh, options In our case, we are going to specify that the learning rate is going to be 0 0.15, for example. And let's start the training. So we require optim. And then we are going to write our epoch. So let's say, uh, I don't know, from 1 to 1000 epochs. So we write function f eval in theta uh, basically f evaluated in theta should return the uh, scalar value of the objective function computed in theta and the derivative of this uh, cost function with respect to these parameters let's provide these elements so at the beginning we are gonna uh, zero the ground parameters of course so that we don't overwrite a previous result this is the same of uh, actually calling model uh, zero grad parameters oh, since we already take them out i just simply zero the, the gradient this way it would be the same then i can define my uh, hypothesis of the network the output of the network which is equal model uh, forward of my uh, matrix X then I will define local J which is my loss to which I forward my output of the network and the labels uh, let's even print this uh, value of j just so we can see uh, how how it performs how the training performs uh, so this is just for just for debugging purpose then we have our local uh, dj in dh x is going to be our loss which I do backward of our output x h of x and y then we have model uh, backward to which I send my input x and the dj dh finally our function, as I said before, has to return the uh, scalar j and the grad theta. After we define this function, I will simply call optim sgt, to which I send my f uh, evaluated, my parameters theta and then the optim state I defined before and that's pretty much it let's actually uh, have again a global net so I can play with it afterwards equal our, equal our model uh, let's go below uh, let's have torch interactive and train so let's try our network forward with torch tensor minus one minus one and this gives us negative value minus one and twenty then let's try to have minus one one and this one gives us a positive result then let's try plus one minus one and this also gives us a positive result and then let's try both positive and that's perfect it gives us uh, a negative result uh, something i'd like to show as well is like uh, in this case we trained the network and we got its final value 
this one. So let's save this value here. For example, I can do print um, previous previous j this one. Um, and let's see how the cost function changes if instead of having uh, a three layer neural network I have a four layer neural network with the same number of neurons so let's uh, make this one uh, fine neurons uh, also here fine neurons and then I simply increase those two, guy, two guys so same number of neurons simply uh, one more layer let's go below and let's see what happens here and there we go from 0.18 we went down to 0.06 so we can see now that stacking multiple layers uh, improve the uh, capabilities of abstraction of a network which can converge to a better minima in the same number with the same number of epochs uh, furthermore, if I would have liked to use another kind of network, I would have simply defined a different model here. Let's see what are now the required operations to have the script running uh, on a GPU. So, so first of all, we are going to have, uh, we just go here, and we are going to have running on GPU. So first of all we have to say require kun cu CUDA neural network. Then we have model send to CUDA. We have loss send to CUDA. Then we are gonna have x equal x we send to CUDA. Y equal y send to CUDA and that's it. Now, if we run this script, instead of running on my CPU, it will be running on the GPU of my machine. So, let's try if it works. Uh, on this Mac, I don't have a GPU, so I will go on my machine. And let's zoom. And then here we have my file. It's the same one. So, let's try to run. Torch train. Boom. And then we can also try to train without these instructions. And we saw, we can see it took some a little bit more time. 